My name is Mark. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I converted my Terratrike Rover uh, to e-assist. There's lots of videos on YouTube that show the process for installing a motor on bikes and trikes. Uh, most of them are relatively generic, but there's very few or none that I've found on the Rover itself. So I'm going to show you just those things that uh, are unique to the Rover and what I did help you maybe if you decide to also to convert one of these old rovers. We'll start here at the front end. This is the Bafang BBSO2 750 watt motor. It's always mounted on the front of the boom for a trike. And the issue with uh, any of these types of uh, mid-drive motors on the front is that the torque of the mo <coughs> motor wants to make it rotate up to the top of the bar and that's fine if you don't mind it being up there but when you do it exposes more of the wires on the bottom and also may get in the way of mounting any type of light on the front so you need a torque arm they spell, sell some very expensive torque arms that will attach the motor and keep it from rotating with the block on top of the the boom however this one that comes from Luna Cycles is only $15 and it attaches very easily and I've drilled a hole here in the boom installed a threaded nut or rivet and fastened it with a number 10 screw and that seems to hold it very well I've also used a four, uh, 52 inch uh, chain ring on the, on the front and that gives me a little bit more power that sends back to the rear hub the next thing to consider is the battery mount. And there are several uh, very well made aftermarket battery mounts available for trikes. There's only one that I could really find that, uh, maybe two, that would work with the square frame on the Rover. But both were $125 plus. I just couldn't bear to depart with that much. So I came up with my own version. This is a quarter inch aluminum plate six inches wide and 12 inches long and it's attached to the frame by two square u-bolts with a spacer so that they will hang below the frame by a couple of inches and with this setup i can uh, put actually two batteries on the bike if i if i choose to do so and that uh, seems to work very well uh, my first version of this was using um, a piece of uh, quarter inch, or excuse me, three quarter inch hardwood as the plate, and I think it would work just well, but very well. But uh, I found that these aluminum plates were available for less than fifteen dollars from uh, oh, I forget the name of the company. I'll put it in the, the description. Granger, excuse me, that's it. It's Granger. That's where I got the uh, the U bolts also, and I ordered them, had them sent to the store, and picked them up. But it seems to work great, and on the other side, I've drilled holes and attached uh, the battery mount to it. And should I choose to, if I want another battery, I'll do the same on the other side and increase my range. Next issue is to consider is where to put the wires. Now I've run them underneath the boom and uh, attached them with zip ties. Uh, these white ones will be switched out to black as soon as I can get a, get a bag of them. Went up to the center joint, tied them there, and then what was left over wrapped around one arm. You can see all the connectors here. And I didn't need any extension cables for the brake, the throttle, or the display. They all had plenty of space uh, to reach the main cable. What I did need an extension cable was for the brake sensor excuse me, the speed sensor, which is down here. So it took an extension cable, it ties in on the original cable here, and comes around, and you just have to take up the slack as best you can. The only other cable I needed was for the battery. So I got an extension cable for it. It really provided too much space. I really only needed about four or five inches. So what I had to do is uh, cut it off, Cut off the one that came out of the battery mount inside here and solder them together and hid them inside the battery mount 
So now I only have a little bit of slack right here. And that's really all I need. The next issue is where to place the display. Even with a, a set of Versa bars on the Rover, there's really not many good places to put it. I had to invest in a accessory mount that allows a horizontal mount of this particular display. And if you got one of the vertical style, there's several that you can get with these, these uh, Buffane kits. Uh, it may not be an issue. I didn't think ahead enough on that one. This display itself works fine. It's just designed for going over the uh, top of the handlebars on a two-wheel bike. So there's really not that many places to put it. So here's what I did on this one. I believe this uh, accessory mount I got from Amazon or someplace. And then I chose to put the controls on the very front of this handlebar, the left side. This is the on-off switch and the level. This is my throttle. And then this is the one of the brakes that came with the Bafang kit. And I chose to only install one Bafang mo uh, brake lever. I put it on this side. The one on the opposite side is the original that has the parking brake on it, which I chose to keep. You really only need one brake attached to the system to cut the motor off when you apply the brakes. And that seems to work very well in this setup. The next issue I found is uh, your internally geared uh, rear hub, if you have one. Uh, the old uh, Nuvenci here 330 is great for a non-powered bike, but it lacks a lot on the uh, high end for the gears. So as a result, the, the motor essentially uh, is too strong for it, but both in the torque and also uh, how much speed you get out of it, because essentially you start to ghost pedaling after about oh, 10 or 12 miles per hour in level two. So the motor is doing more than you can in powering the rear hub. So I plan on converting this to, or, or installing a 380, which will give me more uh, high-end gear range. Another option is to go back to a derailleur. Uh, if you have that, it probably won't be an issue. But otherwise, these uh, Nuvenci internally geared hubs are wonderful uh, if you're staying in either a higher gear range or if you're just staying with the uh, pedal-powered bike. So here we are. We'll take a quick ride. I'm in level one right now. I have it in the highest gear. And let's see how far I can get before I get to ghost pedaling. About 13, almost 14 miles an hour. and at about 11 I'm already ghost pedaling in case you don't know ghost pedaling is where you're feeling no resistance as you pedal that essentially the motor is doing all the work and you can't really help it because there's not enough resistance to help it we're just going to tool around in our neighborhood a little bit Around my neighborhood is about the only place that I ride on the road with traffic. I think it's fairly safe here. Had a pretty bad windstorm last week. Still a lot of cleanup because of that. And we'll go up this hill. I'm still in level two. That's really all I need. You know, this, this system goes up to level five as far as power, but I don't really need it. I, the, the bike uh, gearing on the bike really can't take advantage of the motor as much as I'd like. I started riding a trike, or I bought this used trike uh, late last year after I'd had a epic 
bike wreck with my two wheeler. I had, uh, I went down, it resulted in a concussion, three broken ribs, bruise, a bruised kidney, and a destroyed shoulder. Ended up having to have a complete shoulder replacement. So as soon as as soon as I was mobile enough, I was able to take care of it. My, my kids, all my grown kids, they're in their 40s, uh, insisted I sell them a bicycle, which was probably pretty wise. But I really enjoy cycling. I've had since I was a kid, and I, I miss being out on the road. So uh, I discovered recumbent trikes and I was able to find a used one. It's really not big enough for me, uh, but it, it'll get me around for right now. I don't think I can do much serious in it as far as a long trip, but uh, for a little bit of recreation, it's great. I feel secure in it. Uh, still haven't got my balance back completely. Oh, and I forgot to mention uh, last November, well, four months ago, as I was just getting over the shoulder surgery, I ruptured my Achilles tendon. So I was in a cast for about three months. No weight bearing for two of that. I'm still hobbling around, but I can walk without a cane most of the time. But I can get in this trike and I can go for miles and it, there's no weight bearing. I'm flexing my bad ankle, but at the same time, I'm not putting the stress on it that I, that I would do if I was walking or hiking. And so, in that regard, it's got me back out on the, the road for some exercise. And you may ask, well, with the electric assist, are you really getting exercise? Oh, yes, I am, very much. It is assist, it's not doing it for me. Helps on the hills, mainly. But if I want to uh, get any speed at all, I've got to do my part. And you can see, you can hear them puffing and puffing a tiny bit. And uh, I've enjoyed this so much. And now I worry about uh, two wheel bicycles and accidents that can happen that we have parked my wife's little electric uh, bike and I bought her a Terra Trike Charge. Size-wise, it's very similar to this, but it has a factory installed rear hub motor on it. So now we both can get out on the road. Now we'll go down this hill, see what kind of speed I can get without pedaling, this is just coasting. Probably just about to hit 20 miles per hour. Yeah, I'm almost 20, 21 miles per hour now. Coming down the hill. This is the only real hill in the neighborhood, and it's not that steep. So this is uh, this is how I converted my TerraTrack Rover to a buffet system and uh, hopefully you can see me now uh, if it's something that you want to do with one of, with your rover uh, it will help you a little bit in deciding what mounts you need for the battery and the torque arm and things of that nature like I said there's lots of videos that show you how to convert a bike or a trike in general, but there's not much on the rover itself. The rover has been made since uh, I think 2019, but there's a lot of them out on the used market. Sometimes you can find a bargain. You can expect to spend, this is uh, March of two, uh, 2023, you can expect to spend 
between $800 and $1,000 for uh, uh, ESS conversion using the uh, Bafang system. It's really worth it if you can afford it. And uh, of course that varies from where you get your components. It's always tempted to get the uh, cheapest ones, bits and, bits and pieces off of uh, Amazon. But there's really not a, oh, a, a vendor behind those pieces uh, to give you advice or to back them up. So I would suggest one of the more major uh, vendors online to order your equipment. Okay, going up my steep driveway. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, the comment section below. Thanks a lot.